This morning, we're glad you're here in the house of God with us, and we want to welcome our visitors. I'm telling you, every week we're so blessed to have new faces around here, and we have a handful of them this morning. We welcome you. If you got handed, handed rather, a visitor's packet, uh, there's a card in there. We just ask that you'd fill that out, drop it in the offering plate. It gives us your name and reminds me of your name, and it also kind of lets us know where you're from. And uh, we just appreciate you sharing your time with us here at Bible Baptist. We have already had a good Sunday school hour. We're a little bit down this morning, and we had a crowd last week. Kind of spoiled us a little bit, uh, but uh, but nonetheless, we're glad for each and every one of you. Uh, that are here this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in a word of prayer and get it started off right. Be reminded always there's kids in the back being taught and junior church and toddler church and of course there's a nursery and those classes back there are just as important what we have in here. Uh, and so uh, be sure and as you say your prayers pray for them as well. Okay, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Terry Sackett, will you lead us please? And thank you, maybe seated at this time the choir has a special.
Would you join me in a word of prayer, please? Lord, we love you this morning. And God, we are so grateful that you displayed your love to us by going to an old rugged cross. And Lord, just a while ago, as we were singing that great old song, He Touched Me, I, I was thinking about that evening service at Lake Brownwood, Texas. A youth camp meeting, Cecil Hodges preaching. Just as a young boy, I was sitting in a church service and heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. I came forward and wanted to be saved. Lord, it was the greatest decision that I had ever made in my life. And Lord, it was that night that I was reminded of how much you loved me by paying the penalty for my sins. God, my desire today is if there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, God, I pray that today would be that day. God, I pray for those that have come to your house this morning and maybe they're going through difficulties in their life. God, I pray that you'd encourage them. God, I pray that just for a few moments that we'll focus totally upon you. God, that we'll open our heart to the message that you have for us today. I pray that you'd be with Brother Chris as he comes and preaches for us in just a few moments. And God, I pray that you'd use him in a mighty way today. God, I pray that your name would be exalted and I pray that we would lift you up high today. God, I pray that you do a mighty work amongst us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with us once again? Sing to the King who is coming to
ever song that more people have come to be saved. And so, you know, Billy Graham always sung this song as an invitation. And there's literally probably millions of people that has responded to his preaching. And, and when this song was sung, people would come just as they are. But I'm telling you, when they accepted Jesus Christ, they didn't leave as they were. And you know, I can remember as a kid growing up in church and watching people down through the years sing this song and people get saved while it was being sung. I can remember seeing people that were addicted to alcohol come and get saved and God deliver them from that. I can remember seeing people that were steep in sin coming to just as they were and accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and, and God saving them and changing them. We're going to sing the chorus of this and it says, I come broken to be mended. If you're broken this morning, I'm telling you, you can be mended. I come wounded. If you're wounded this morning, I'm telling you, you can come and be healed. And, and the song says, I come desperate to be rescued. I'm telling you, if you come to Jesus today, he will heal you and make you free. I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcome with open arms. Praise God. Just in our young people's hearts, Lord, that they would make a conscious decision someday to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. God, we have guests here this morning, return visitors, and we're so thankful for each of them. I pray that they'll feel at home, that they'll feel the love of God here in the house of God, and Lord, that they will find that this is their church, and Lord, we welcome them. And I ask, Father, that you will, for the next few moments, give me thoughts and clarity clarity of speech keep my throat lord as i often have to pray lord keep my throat clear where uh, i'm not uh, disturbing or distracting through my uh, coughing and such i ask father that you will bless your people and lord reward them for being faithful to the house of god and i ask all this in jesus name amen okay if you will okay all right proverbs chapter four Proverbs chapter 4, and if you have heard me, you probably have heard me say many times over the years, what's down in the well will come up in the bucket. And what I mean by that when I say that uh, is whatever is in our heart will eventually reveal itself through our words, through our attitudes, or perhaps our behavior. We may be do a very good job of keeping that hidden for the most part, but if it's there, it's going to surface. Uh, our heart, if you will, is, uh, is a reservoir. It is the, uh, 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 the, uh, the place where our thoughts and our emotions and our ideologies are stored. And this text that we're about to read, just going to be one verse, uh, 
makes that very clear for us this morning. I want you to look at verse 23. We're in Proverbs chapter 4. Simple verse says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Heart, the heart in this context simply means our inner self, uh, the, the center of who we are. The, 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 if, if you will, if you'll picture a place there inside of us, just visualize a place inside of us where our thoughts and our feelings uh, and all the things that we believe are, are stored. It's a place where our ideas originate. It's a place where our, our opinions are, 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 uh, come from. It's a place where our worldview has been formed. It's a place of, of storage, if you will, within each one of us. We all have that place within us the Bible calls the heart. Now, if you and I use the term, sometimes we say, well, let's get to the heart of the matter. What we're saying there is, let's get to the, uh, the core of it, to the, to the center of it. And so uh, that's simply what the heart means here. If, if our heart is the center of us, then that means that everything else in our life revolves around it. And that's exactly what our verse is saying here. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, but out of it are the issues of life. We would be very safe if we paraphrase that by saying, out of our heart flows the issues of life. What am I talking about by the issues of life? Uh, talking about our priorities, our, our words, our attitudes, our opinions, our, our goals, even the way we uh, uh, approach child raising and parenting, uh, how we treat people, our habits, our behaviors. It all begins right here in the heart. It all originates right here within us. Let me illustrate this for a moment. <clears throat> Trisha and I uh, live in the country and just a few miles out, and we have running water. And we've come a long ways, folks. We've got running water now. And we, because we have running water at our house, we have several faucets from which that water flows. We've got a kitchen sink, has a faucet for washing dishes. Uh, of course, we have a shower uh, for, for taking showers. She has her bathroom sink. I have my bathroom sink. Uh, we even have a faucet that connects to the, uh, to the washing machine so we can do laundry. And, and <coughs> we have faucets in the extra bathroom bathroom that we have. And, and we have faucets outside, faucets that are there uh, handy to water the yard or the shrubs. Or even I got one faucet that I set in the southeast corner of the property in, in case I need to run water uh, from it to the cattle that I have in a little patch of wheat behind my house. And, and so I say all that to say that this, there are several faucets that have different purposes and dispense water uh, to different things but they all have the same source. Each one provides water that comes from our well. You see, that's the, the source. So when we moved in there uh, just under uh, a couple of two years ago, uh, when we moved in, we discovered that sometimes our water was discolored. Uh, sometimes uh, it just it didn't happen all the time, but periodically the, the water would uh, just have a, a little bit of a rust look to it. And it, it even would uh, stain our toilet bowl just a little bit. And it would leave splotches on, on the whites when, when Trisha did laundry. And, and uh, we knew we had some sort of problem. We didn't know exactly what it was. But we just didn't like, obviously, the quality of water that was coming out of the faucets. So we had a specialist come look, a, a guy with a, a water filtration uh, service, and had him come look. And let me ask you a question. Where do you think that specialist began? Exactly. He didn't answer, but I, I, know, I can read your mind. <laughs> he began at the well. He began at the well. Uh, though we had discolored water coming through our kitchen faucet, he didn't go in there and start taking things apart and trying to figure that out. And though we had light stains uh, on, on the whites in our laundry, he didn't go in there and start working on the washing machine. And, and, and even, even though we had a rusty kind of look in, in, in the toilet bowl, he didn't go in there and say, hey, we, you need a new toilet. 
You see, all of that would have been foolish. He knew that he had to go to the source of the water. And of course, when he went to the source, he ran some tests, and he found a couple of different issues there. He put a filtration system in for us, and, uh, and, and it's been fine ever since. So that's where the illustration ends, right there. Our text says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Do you have things flowing from your life that you really don't like? Some people have anger issues. Some people struggle with pride. Some with lust. Some with jealousy various addictions, destructive behaviors. It could even be our, our attitude, just our simple attitude or demeanor around other people. Maybe we're abrasive or perhaps we're obnoxious or tend to always offend people. You see, the possibilities are innumerable. But whatever the issue is, the key to correcting it is going to the source, going to our hearts. We've got a heart problem. When we have a, a word problem or an attitude problem, we really have a heart problem. You're not going to fix the attitude until you fix the heart. You're not going to fix the words that flow from your mouth until you fix the heart. And so it says, keep thy heart with all diligence. It says, keep it. Keep it. What does that mean? There's a couple of basic ways that we keep our heart. One is protecting it. And number two is maintaining our heart by giving it the things that we need. Now, I want you to picture uh, with me a giant reservoir or lake that catches water and stores it. You see, our towns get most of our water from these type of lakes, Lake uh, Allen Henry and Lake Meredith up north and the various lakes around the country. It rains and the surrounding actually millions of acres uh, 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 of watershed flows into these lakes or reservoirs and there it becomes a storage uh, of water and the various municipalities, uh, uh, municipalities uh, the towns, um, uh, pump, <laughs> they pump that water into their, through pipelines to the homes of their people. There again, it's the source. It's the place where the water is stored and then it's distributed elsewhere. Well, if our heart holds all the things that are eventually going to flow out of us, it must be kept diligently, our verse says there. I know this, that a lot of people don't care for the EPA and the various regulations, and I, I get that. There's a lot of over, overstepping there, but, but I do understand the value of protecting those reservoirs. You see, I've got friends that in the feedlot business, their own feedlots and some little private feedlots, and one of the things they have to do at those feedlots is create a, uh, 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 what's the term, a place to catch the water that runs off of those, uh, uh, those uh, uh, pens of cattle that's dense with feces and things of this nature. That water can't just go anywhere it wants to go. They catch it in little cesspool type situation. Um, every feedlot will have that place, okay? Why is that? To protect that junk from going into the reservoirs or eventually flowing into the lakes that we get our water from. Our hearts have to be protected as well. We must be very, very careful what we let flow into our heart. I've said this many times, and, and, and I know I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, but I'll take that risk. Our devices, you know what I'm talking about, our screens, coupled with the information age, it's destroying our society. It's literally tearing our society up. So much information is flowing into the minds of our young people. It's coming in so fast, it's very difficult for parents to control the content. 
and we yield ourselves, our children, to the school system, rightly so, we need to. We yield our children to computers and, and cell phones and television and social media, and the question is, how in the thunder are we going to keep that information that flows into them filtered? How are we going to keep contaminants, if you will, from flowing into the minds or getting into their hearts? The answer is we're not. It's, it, we, can, we can improve, but we're not going to stop it all. And it's not just our young people. It's, it's all of us. We're never going to be able to totally control the input that comes into our hearts. We can strive to do better. The Bible says, I will set no wicked thing before me, uh, before mine eyes. We can strive to make sure that doesn't happen. But we're never going to totally keep all the junk from getting in and flowing in through our ears and our eyes. But we must decisively, folks, make an effort to filter those impurities before they ever enter into our heart. It takes work. How is that done? It takes a lot of work. And I'll say this, and my parenting days are over. But if you're a lazy parent, you're not going to get it done. Because it takes work. It takes effort. You're not going to have success at, at keeping your, heart, your child's heart clean if you're lazy. If we allow devices to babysit our children 24-7, they're going to get filled with impurities through the course of day after day after day. And I'm not saying that there's not a place for television or internet or phones in their lives because clearly each of those have a, a role. But what I'm saying is we must do our due diligence in monitoring and controlling those things. I'm not against TV by any stretch of the imagination. Cooper and Bergen are out of town. They, they took a few days off and, and uh, uh, very, I think they deserved it. I'm glad they did. But they left Two little roundheads behind for somebody to take care of. <laughs> Channing and Sutton. So they stayed with us uh, Thursday most of the day and, 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 and then through the night and Friday and, and Friday night. Folks, I'm a firm believer in bubble guppies, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have a problem with a little bit of TV. And I, I'll tell you what else I'm for, Benadryl. Um, <laughs> that stuff that works, man. <laughs> I get ready to watch Gunsmoke, a little Benadryl there out. And I'll be getting... I, I really didn't do that, is it? <laughs> but I think you get my point. We're never going to control all the impurities that might get into our children's heart or our hearts, but we can do everything and make our best effort to, feel, uh, to filter their intake. Let me ask you a question. This is going to get touchy, okay? When is the last time that you were halfway through a television program, movie perhaps, or sitcom, whatever, and you turned the channel because the content became either too vile or inappropriate or profane or offensive. You ask yourself that question. Now, I'm going to make a statement that's not going to go over well, but my, my job is not to, 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 to make people happy. My job is to help us each learn how to become more holy and vessels for God. Here's my question. If you're a TV person, that's not a question, is it? But it, we'll get to it. If you're a TV person or a movie watcher, like most of us, many of us are to a degree, if you are one, but you cannot remember the last time you changed the channel because of content, profanity, innuendo, sexual overtures, even blasphemy of our Lord, 
If you can't remember the last time you changed the channel because of those things, I'm going to tell you something. You've been lulled to sleep by our society, and you are without question allowing a lot of impurities to flow into your life. I'm sorry, that's tough. You say, well, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, the, the age we live in. Uh, it's unavoidable. You can't hide from it. But I'm sorry, friends, it's, that's an excuse. I'm nobody, okay? I, I'm not any better than anybody else. I'm certainly not more holy than anyone else. But for, if for no other reason at all, other than to just honor God with my spare time, my entertainment, and my home, I'm going to, I refuse to listen to Hollywood use my Lord's name in vain. I'm not going to do it. I could not tell you the times Trisha and I have tried even westerns and think, you know, we're going we're gonna to watch this movie. It, it, I bet you it's, I bet you that it, and halfway through it, they use not God's name in vain. This is our standard. It's going off. I don't care if I've got an hour and 45 minutes invested in the movie. I'm going to honor God with my mind, my home, my television. Just, that's just it. And she agrees. We don't ever have any kind of dispute about it because we both want to, to have flowing into our home things that are honorable to God. Some may think that I'm a proof. Some may think that we're, we're, we're holier than thou or fan, 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 fanatical or antiquated or otherwise, but, but that's not it at all. We just want to keep our hearts. I'm not going to let Hollywood entertain me with homosexuality. I'm not going to do it. And it's hard to watch anything without being, having it crammed down your throat. That goes also for illicit sexual, heterosexual stuff. I'm not going to entertain myself with it. Again, friends, I say that I'm not better, but here's the deal. In my own humanity, I have enough garbage in my nature to be trying to tend to without inviting a bunch more in, friends, without indulging myself with all the outside garbage. I got plenty of garbage to deal with already. We must keep our hearts. But folks, it doesn't just stop with our devices or our entertainment. We have to manage our social environment. Our interactions with, with friends and, and groups of people uh, that we spend time with. The Bible says a companion of fools shall be destroyed. There's always going to be people and situations that are not good influences upon us. And, and it, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of discipline to control that. We need, I tell you what you and I need right now is peaceful hearts. But if we don't put peaceful content in, then we won't have peaceful hearts. And if we don't have peaceful hearts, then the output is not going to be peaceful. We need to try to avoid individuals or groups that are constantly tumultuous, criticizing, grumbling, backbiting, gossiping, whining, complaining, bemoaning life. Not that we can't have, we can't sever ourselves and refuse to be friends with them, but we need to limit our exposure to that. We need to steer clear of it as best we can. And when we do that, that helps us keep more peaceful hearts, more peaceful hearts produce a more peaceful life, more peaceful attitude, more peaceful language, these sort of things. Back home in Clarendon, where I, where, where I, where I grew up in Goodnight, but, but went to school in Clarendon, and Clarendon's pretty much home. We get our water from Lake Greenbelt, which is just north of town a few miles, and, and uh, the water uh, in Greenbelt, uh, once in a while, uh, now, it used to happen. I don't know whether it still happens or not. But once in a while, it would begin to come through the tap just a little bit dingy. It'd just have a tint to it and, 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 and maybe even just a tiny bit of uh, a flavor change in it. And, 
and uh, it's, it's gone, that water had gone through the treatment process at the uh, treatment plant, but still it was not completely clear. And, and I don't know what the dynamics of this is, but I used to ask people in, in the old timers, they said, well, the lake turned over. And I, I, again, I don't know exactly what that meant, but I'm pretty sure it just had something to do uh, with a disturbance in, in, in that lake, in that reservoir. And so that, again, maybe just once a year it would happen, but when it happened, the water that we was being retrieved from there would just be a little more murky because of that disturbance. I think that pictures what happens to us a lot of times. We allow things to disturb our hearts. It may be a friend or a companion that contaminates us, it may be someone's negative rhetoric that we expose ourselves. It may be gossip and such. It may be reading material. It may be uh, uh, the programs we see on TV. It may be social media. I want to tell you, and guys, I am not. Don't leave here saying, man, he, Brother Chris says social media is a sin because I don't. I don't have it. I don't want it. Uh, but I do know it's like everything. It's like the Internet. It can be a tremendous tool but it can also be a tool of Satan. Depends on how you choose to use it, okay? So I'm not against social media, but I have from time to time, not uh, uh, much, but I have had the kids or somebody tell me, well, so-and-so, <laughs> you would not believe what they posted. And just the little examples of that that I get, I'm thinking, how do you continually see junk like that and maintain your sanity? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's just, it's just it's, we have to protect our hearts. Let me quickly just comment on the second element of keeping our hearts. We, we talked about protecting it. Yes, we've got to control the input. We've got to filter as best we can what we allow to flow within, inside our hearts or the hearts of our children. But secondly, we have to maintain our hearts. And what I'm talking about here is by caring for our hearts, giving our hearts what they need. You see, our hearts need to be fed. They need to be fed things that are stable, things that are true, things that are peaceful, things that are joyful, fulfilling, things that are purposeful. And there's no greater source of all of these things than the Word of God. We have to feed our hearts the Word of God. I don't know about you guys, Americans, but in the world that I wake up to every day, I would not have an ounce of sanity if it were not for the Word of God. I'm telling you. I would not have, I would be nuts if I did not have the promises of God's Word to claim. I would be absolutely crazy if I didn't know the foundational truths of the Bible and the revelation of God's Word that tells us how everything ends. I'm telling you, I would be a fruit loop. We have to maintain our hearts, Christians, by continually exposing ourselves to God's Word. Let me revisit just for a moment the subject of parenting. The Bible says, the psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. What's David saying there? What's, he's saying, I have to continually feed myself the Word of God to keep me from going out and doing wrong things and sinning against the Lord. Even if we're not lazy parents, and we're very diligent to, to filter the content that, 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 that our kids uh, are exposed to, we monitor it as best we can, even then, junk's going to get in, friends. There are going to be impurities that flow into their lives that we can't do anything about. These poor kids, I bless their heart, I, I'm, I'm four kids, guys. I'm not one of these guys, boy, this younger generation, I see a lot of things about them that I don't like, but we've produced it. Okay, our society has produced it. Think about this. A young person, a young man, 
especially, can be minding his own business, doing his own thing at school, going to the restroom or sitting in the library, and another young man can hand him a phone and say, look at this. Before he even could put a stop to it, he's seen that image. You see, the impurities are going to get through. They're going to get in there. So we have to use the other side of the sword, and we have to nourish their hearts with the Word of God. The Word of God will help offset or cancel out that negative, impure input that flows into their life. They go to school, and they see Billy trying to be Buffy. <laughs> Billy wants to be a girl. Or they see Tammy trying to be Tommy. Well, they don't buy into it because they've also gone to Sunday school and they know what God's Word says about gender. You see? They go to a friend's house and spend the night and, and they're allowed to be exposed to maybe a movie or some sort of program that, that uh, uh, glamorizes uh, illicit relations or, or drugs or alcohol or a program that undermines parental authority and they don't let that get a foothold in their life because they've been taught at home what God says about all of those things. You see, we're not going to filter it all. But we can make sure we put enough of God's Word and we raise them in the house of God in such a way that they can sort through those impurities that we miss. I want to challenge you from, from this day forward. Brother David, you guys can come. This is a very simple challenge. I know you can do it, and I know you will do it. Add to your prayer life this one request. God, help me keep my heart. Very simple. won't take you long. I know you pray. You're God's people. Add that to your prayer request. God, help me keep my heart. God will honor that prayer. But you know what it will also do? By saying that and praying for that, it will also challenge us to make every effort ourselves to keep our hearts. Keep it with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. All that we do out here externally flows from our hearts, what's inside of us. I'm going to ask you to stand. Maybe you're here this morning, you just want to seek God for parenting strength. You might want to seek God for maybe you've recognized some things that you need to change or fix in, in, in managing and filtering the content that comes into your heart and life. Whatever God has spoken to your heart about, these altars are open. If He's spoken to you, please come. Oh, to Jesus.
So glad to see you here uh, this morning. I pray that you have a good Lord's Day. We're going to finish up this evening around here at 6 o'clock, Brother David preaching to us, and uh, that'll be good. We invite you to come back. I want to tell our visitors we're so thankful that you came. If you filled out a visitor's card, uh, would you? there's an offering place at the back of the auditorium that you could drop that in, and we would appreciate that. By the way, we haven't been passing the plates due to COVID, but uh, if you have an offering that you'd like to give, there's always plates on the back table. Next Sunday, uh, you're going to need to set your clocks. You're going to need to spring forward. If you don't, you're going to be late for church, and we don't want that, okay? And so be sure and change your clocks. Fortunately, today's day, uh, most of our clocks get changed for us, but uh, uh, just be reminded of that. And then also next Sunday is going to be a special day. We're, gonna, uh, we're, we're having guest speaker, Brother Chris Fobbs, is going to come, and it's going to, uh, he's going to preach to us. It's going to be Missions Emphasis Sunday. Uh, we're having to get a little bit creative. We're getting our missionaries in here. We'll be watching a video of one of our missionaries, a, a brief video, and then Brother Chris is going to challenge us uh, with a, a mission message. And so I pray that you'll come back. Hope that you will bring somebody with you, and uh, and that will be good as well. Am I leaving anything out, David? This week? Tuesday? Okay, Young at Heart. Uh, this will be our first time to have had that in a long time. I'm looking forward to it. I've been polishing up on my chicken foot skills. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I pity the fool that gets across the table from me. We're going to play chicken foot and 42 and whatever we want to play here. We'll do it 10 o'clock on Thursday, uh, Tuesday rather, and, and then we'll have a potluck meal along with that. I hope this is, if you're new here, this is for those that are 55 and older. But if you're not that old and you got a day off and you want to come spend time with us, we always welcome you to do that. It's a fun, fun time. Yeah, Christy, you can come, okay? <laughs> All right. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Lord bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness, okay? Uh, let's be dismissed. Ray Griggs, my friend, will you lead us in prayer, please? <laughs>